populations will grow and shrink over time for many reasons. One of those is the birth rate, which is the number of births occurring in a period of time. In this graph, with number of individuals on the side and time on the bottom, the overall birth rate is increasing, which means the population is likely also increasing. Death rate, or mortality rate, is the number of deaths in a period of time. In this diagram, the death rate is dropping, but what does that actually mean? That means that less people are dying as time goes on. This also means that the population will likely increase. The simple way to find out if a population is growing is to calculate the births minus the deaths. If the number is positive, the population is growing. If the number is negative, the population is shrinking. But this is perhaps oversimplified. In reality, there's also immigration and emigration to consider. So here's a more realistic growth rate calculation. The growth rate is equal to the births plus the immigration minus the deaths and the emigration. You can remember that immigration means individuals coming into a population, and emigration is individuals exiting the population. Immigration in, emigration exit. The distribution of individuals among different ages in a population is called age structure. Age structures are often represented in graphs or population pyramids. Let's look at a population pyramid. Here's a population pyramid for the United States. It's fairly stable, and it doesn't actually look that much like a pyramid. On the left are the males of the population, and on the right are the females of the population. You can see that it's more rectangular than a pyramidal. Here's another developed country. Again, it has more of a square shape than a pyramid. Now, less developed countries tend to have an actual pyramid shape because they have higher growth rates but don't have as many individuals that live to an old age. A survivorship curve is a graph that shows the number or proportion of individuals surviving to each age for a given species or group. Type 1 survivorship curves produce few offspring and care for the young. They have high survival rates of the young, and they live out most of their expected lifespan and die in old age. Examples of type 1 are humans or even large mammals like elephants. In the type 2 survivorship curve, there's a constant death rate throughout the lifespan. An example of this would be coral. Type 3 survivorship curves have many young, most of which will die at a very young age. An example would be plants. They make lots of seeds, but very few of them will actually make it into adulthood. Now, each of these types of survival have their benefits and their drawbacks. For example, humans have high survivorship, but they don't make as many offspring. If you watch a population begin to grow over time, you'll find that the population size expands by ever-increasing increments during successive intervals. The larger the population gets, the more individuals there are to reproduce, which leads to exponential growth. This graph is sometimes called a J-curve because of the shape of a J that it makes. At this point, there are unlimited resources and unlimited space. But the reality is that at some point, space and resources will run out. As size of a population increases, the rate of reproduction will actually decrease. When the population reaches carrying capacity, the population growth ceases and you see a flattened line. Carrying capacity is determined by limiting factors like space, food availability, and predators. This logistic growth curve looks like an S that's been stretched out, so this is sometimes called an S-curve. Limiting factors can be categorized as density-dependent or density-independent factors. Density-dependent factors include resource limitations such as shortages of food or nesting sites, and they're triggered by increasing population density. With density-dependent factors, an individual's chance of surviving or reproducing depends on the number of individuals in the same area. Density-independent factors, such as weather, floods, and fires, reduce the population by the same proportion regardless of a population size. Both of these can affect where the carrying capacity is. Thanks for watching this episode of Teacher's Pet. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter at SciencePet.